really like listening to your children like really listening to them not like symbolically bringing them in and doing a survey once in a while but really designing around your children's needs by listening to them we just need to be fueling the educational landscape and specifically the landscape that deals with inequity in education with more leadership So today we have with us Shaheen Mistry who after having worked with varied organizations across Mumbai and motivated by the grit to change the inequality in Indian education system founded Akanksha Foundation and Teach for India both of which have today become exemplary interventions in the space of education and continue to inspire many more people to come forward and bridge the gap of access to education across the country thank you so much for joining us Shaheen it's a privilege having you thank you so much and just to begin with inequalities in indian education system is one of the reasons you ventured into the space of education to change the same so would you say the same has changed or is the change still underway for the domain if you would like yeah it's such a a big and important question um and and just a caveat that i i speak from my own experience but um i think you know i started my work at 18 um it's about 30 years ago so so i've seen the the sector evolve um i think overall what has shifted is um on the positive side is a lot more focus on quality of education i think the conversation when i started my work was a lot around access yeah. um and and not around uh quality um i think also another massive change has just been uh the excitement in the sector in joining the sector so i know people looked at me very strangely when i said i wanted to leave america and come back to india to be in education but today many 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 people um uh, of all different uh from all different backgrounds are getting into education and prioritizing it so i think some really positive shifts i've seen a massive change in um government's um willingness to partner um very broadly um to really push the envelope on what education can look like so so lots of positive changes there lots of positive changes um on the policy side as well so i think um much to to celebrate in terms of progress um i think on the other side is the dismal truth that like learning outcomes haven't improved yeah. um that children today in schools still don't feel safe there is a level of fear in schools that um education still continues in too many schools to be rote based examination driven not purposeful not relevant um so when i i look at all of that i feel that the truth still for uh most indian children is quite grim in terms of schools ability to unleash their greatest potential um but a lot of positive sparks of hope um and hoping to see much more significant um impact over the next decade definitely and i couldn't agree more with that and not talking about teach for india so what started as a desire to teach the less privileged children in mumbai has today grown into a kanksha foundation and teach for india so how would you say that the same has evolved since the beginning to what has uh, become now yeah i mean you know i i mean everything has evolved is the is the honest answer because i started as a college student just wanting to teach myself and so um it's evolved a long way and um at the same time i feel often that we've taken such baby steps compared to the need out there so so both sides are true um i i think a very significant evolution was from one organization akanksha um being sort of a niche organization being able to serve very beautifully a small number of children to saying actually if we want to get a high quality education to all children in the country we need like 
a movement of leaders across the country exactly. focused on and equipped to actually being able to do that. So I think the biggest evolution was from individual contribution to really how do we think multiplier and think scale while still not losing what we know to be true, which is that education is difficult. It's a deep process. It takes many years. It's very hard to unleash even our own potential, let alone the, the potential of, of millions of children across the country. Um, so, I, so I think the idea of leadership has been um, a, a big piece of the evolution. I think another big piece of the evolution has been just the power of the collective. I think we've never seen it as clearly as we have actually in the last three months since COVID yeah. hit us, where we've seen so many people coming together um, to reimagine what, what our society much more broadly could look like and what about the old we want to keep and what about the new we want to shift. Um, so just the idea of collective people working together, um, I think that's been a, a big part of the evolution as well. And like you mentioned that uh, there's a, I would say, a rush of people moving into the space and a lot of new interventions are coming uh, on a daily basis. So do you think the current rate at which all these edtech and other innovations that are flooding the space will lead to an improved education system? Or is there a need to change the approach and revive the older and much sustainable models alongside tech? Yeah. So, I mean, I, the honest answer is I hope that technology does miraculous things for education. Um, and I think it's going to depend on how thoughtful we are about how we use it with children and how, as you said, uh, it, it, it supplements the physical classroom. So I think for me, this term blended learning that we're thinking very deeply about at Teach for India as well is very, very exciting because what we're saying is that we understand that the physical classroom is really a sacred space, right? But deep relationships and um, thinking and peers working together. And there's just so many advantages to a physical classroom. But with blended learning, you become a teacher, not only of a physical classroom, but of a virtual classroom as well. And the beautiful thing about that is that learning expands to life, right? You're, you don't only learn in the few hours that you're in a classroom, but you're learning at home and peers can be learning together and a teacher can be sparking an idea at home that a kid can be thinking about and all ideas and resources accessible to you. Um, and I think that's the power of what blended learning can be. Um, I think we need to be really careful about not taking traditional school and a teacher standing at a blackboard Definitely. and videotaping it and then thinking that that is virtual learning. I think that will be a disaster. I think we need to think about the things we know to be really important with kids. How do we now build relationships with kids online? How do we make kids feel safe enough to raise their voice online? How do we encourage debate? How do we assess learning online? So lots of big questions out there right now, but my hope is that we're asking ourselves the right questions as we design what could be a really powerful new reality. Indeed. And like you mentioned that this relationship between a teacher or a student is something that needs to be developed way more for it to be like, you know, improve the learning outcomes for everyone. And if we talk about Teach for India and your journey in specific, so you've also had these little stories of students that came into Teach for India and then grew out of it into like, you know, better human beings. So what's the importance of these stories for you? And how do you see them kind of motivating you every day to run the organization? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, stories are just what we all live for actually right because um while the the vision of the work that we do is so lofty and so big and the idea of an excellent education for all children in india is such a meaningful purpose to work towards it's really seeing what that looks like in one child uh that gives you the conviction that it's worth um staying on that path and working for that 
vision. And I mean, just, just yesterday, in fact, I was, I, I spoke to one of my students, ex students three times in the day. Um, and she's now in the U S at Franklin Marshall university. So she's gone from a low income community in Pune to a leading university in the U S and she's now working with me on creating a democracy curriculum for the Delhi government. And that to me is just unbelievable that like a student exactly. that started with us is today like just an absolutely equal thought partner in the development of something that potentially is going to impact millions of kids. And so that's the power I think of stories. I think that they, for me, they make it possible. Like I often say when I started teaching when I was 18, I didn't have high enough expectations of my kids. Like they showed me that my expectations should be higher. Um, and I think that's what proof points and stories are, are just so important in helping us hold a really high bar for what is possible with children. Definitely. And that's really well put. And since you've also spent like a considerable time in the domain, and also seeing the changes up front, like you mentioned that you've been on ground, you scaled it up from scratch, definitely. And so what would you say are the challenges that an organization faces in terms of scaling such an organization in the space of education in particular? You know, there are so many predictable challenges, right? Funding, government, um, staff and finding enough staff. And like, I, I think those are the challenges that every single organization faces. I have found that the biggest, most important challenges are the, the challenges within us that we need to overcome. And so how do I hold on to belief on difficult days? How do I have the resilience to keep going when perhaps there are other opportunities that are different outside? How do I find the love in my heart to um, deal with conflicts in a way that is true to my value system. I, I think it's the inner work that actually is the most challenging in staying on the path. Um, and, and something that often we think a lot about, I think the external challenges, but you know, the external challenges are always there. Like one of them goes away and another, I keep telling people as I get older, I realize that just more and more challenges keep coming, right? So the more, the better you get at solving challenges, right. ironically, the more life throws them at you. So I think challenges will keep coming and going and will be an everyday part of life. But it's really developing the inner strength a little bit better each day to be able to deal with them that I think is actually the biggest challenge. And talking about the future of Teach for India, so what are some of the, I would say, space or particular areas that you're looking to work into in the future? So uh, you've also expanded your geographies outside of India into, I think, yeah. a few new regions. So what is next on the cards for Teach for India? Yeah. So, so three things, I mean, at the core of what we do and what we will continue to do is the belief that we just need to be fueling the educational landscape and specifically the landscape that deals with inequity in education with more leadership. So a big part of our future is just how do we put more leaders out there into the ecosystem who have been on the ground, who are passionate about ending educational inequity and who have the skills to do that. So that will continue to be sort of our big focus area. We've seen a massive multiplier um, with that over time. The second thing that we will continue to do and refine is say, how can we be a, a support to our alumni after the two-year fellowship so that they can have the greatest possible impact that they can have. So can we set up structures to help our alumni connect, um, to help our alumni learn from each other? Um, how do we really help this great group of strong individuals continue to come together as, as collectives that can drive great change. So I think that's the second area. 
And the third area that we will continue to focus on is innovation. And what does it mean to really work alongside students and refine the role of student leadership for education? So, um, you know, we always think that kids are there to be educated. Yeah. But what about the idea of kids being there alongside us as change makers for the world today? irrespective of how old they are. So there's innovation in student leadership. There's innovation in teacher education that we think very deeply about. We have a platform called Firki, which is an online teacher training platform that we continue to invest a lot of effort in. Um, and we have a beautiful program called TFIX, which is trying to move beyond urban India across the length and breadth of India to say, can we support local entrepreneurs to build local um, pipelines of leadership uh, for education? So yeah, broadly like growing the fellowship, strengthening the alumni movement and focusing and, and fostering innovation are going to be the three big focus areas. Great. And coming to the end of the conversation, so summing it all up, so what would be some suggestions in particular that you would like to give to organizations or individuals who are trying to bring change in the space of education and are struggling in one way or the other to kind of take it to the next level? Yeah, I mean, a few things that I believe deeply in, and I'll just share those, whether, whether they resonate um, or not, I, I'm not sure. But one is that, like really like listening to your children, like really listening to them, not like symbolically bringing them in and doing a survey once in a while, but really designing around your children's needs by listening to them. That, that's been one big learning for me. The second has been like working alongside your children and alongside your people. So. Um, just exploring the concept of partnership, um, trying to break down hierarchy, understanding that there is a value of hierarchy for clarity of roles, but, but in spirit, in values, um, we're all the same. And what does it mean to unleash the potential of everybody by really having people work with each other? Um, I think that's a second big learning for me. And the third is just, if I were to choose from all of our values and ideas, um, the, the idea of love as a value and deepening our understanding of love, it feels to me like such a powerful driver of change. Because when you love, firstly, there's a, there's a love for self and an acceptance um, and a compassion to self that I think is really needed in the sector because the work is hard. Um, there's a love for other that can I love the children that I work for? Can I love the people that I'm working alongside? Um, there's a love for the mission and the purpose and the work. I just feel when we love anything in our lives, we are willing to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. and, and this work demands you to do whatever it takes. And so you need to love it. Um, and the final one I would say is just make sure that because the work is difficult and overwhelming and the goals are far away, um, thinking a lot about making the process meaningful. Um, so making the process joyful, one of celebration, one of um, welcoming people's mistakes and, and helping them learn from it. So while the work is very high stakes, trying not to make it feel high stakes, that's been another, another learning for me. Definitely. And that brings us to the close of the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us, Shaheen. It's been a pleasure having you and getting to know more about like how even listening to children can help and they could be like the change makers that we actually need in the future. And I hope that you continue to inspire more people to do wonders in the space of education. Thank you so much once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.